What's up everybody, it's your boy Mim here. Uh, my hair looks a little weird because I just took a shower, but check it out. Uh, I got another, I got two of these uh, from Amazon. Normally my parents, when they go to Costco, they got, they get um, this big thing of gum, right? That I usually eat from, uh, but they didn't get it. And I was literally out of gum. And so um, I just had to, you know, take matters into my own hands. And I had to use the same stick of gum for a couple days, but um, you know, now I have these, I have around like, I, I think I have like 300 sticks of gum now, which is nice. I guess I'll put this on my bed for now. So I find a permanent place for it. Um, the Apple event happened today. And, uh, you know, less importantly, the first day of school was supposed to happen today. But um, there was a, uh, uh, there's a strike going on. And so there's no school. Uh, so the nice thing about that is that I was actually able to watch the Apple event with my dad, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, let's go over the lineup. Um, so the first thing is, the first thing that they mentioned in the uh, in the in the event is probably the the Apple Watch, and they uh, announced the Apple Watch Ultra, and they announced the um, which is this, they announced the um, Series Eight, and I'm pretty sure the only difference between the Series Seven and the Series Eight is that the Series Eight has car crash detection and body temperature detection. Um, there might be more information. I'm not sure exactly what they got as well. Uh. Yeah, there's better cycle detection because of the temp body temperature. Um, I think the screen might be brighter. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, there, there isn't, there isn't all that much of a difference between the Series Seven and Series Eight. So, you know, if you ha if you have a Series Seven, those are easier to get a Series Eight. We'll get back to this one later. Um, yeah, it's it's not incredibly interesting. Uh, but the really interesting thing, and the main um, event for the Apple Watch part of the part of the event, is the uh, Apple Watch Ultra. And the cool thing about the Apple Watch Ultra is that it has this action button right here, which you can bind to just whatever you want. Like you can do whatever you want. It has um, three big microphones. So um, you know, I think one of these might actually be a speaker, but uh, it has three microphones, and it is able to just like uh, hear you really well. Uh, so you can do calls like really well. Um, it comes with cellular just automatically. It actually has a, um, a sapphire screen, and uh, the interesting thing about that, uh, the cool thing about the sapphire screen is that it actually, um, uh, it actually protects the glass, and it's actually more brittle. Uh, but it's uh, sapphire is actually more resistant to to cracks. I slow the sound. Um, and so uh, another cool thing is, of course, you said it, saw it right there. It has a titanium case, which is kind of crazy. Um, the other Apple Watches, you can get either um, aluminum or stainless steel or titanium, uh, but that just comes with titanium, so that's pretty cool. Um, another thing is that it has 100 meters of depth uh, strength, so um, you know when you're when you're diving, you can do things. It comes with a really cool. Um, it comes with three new straps. Uh, let's see if we can see the straps. Oh, yep, here they are up here. Yeah, so they have this like alpine loop and trail loop and ocean band. Uh, this one's for like water stuff, and this one's for like, like climbing mountain. I I don't know. They just look cool, and uh, you know this one is particularly particularly nice because it has kind of a kind of a hook design, um, and that means you know it's never never coming out. You know, um, yeah, it just looks very secure. It looks very well made, um, and uh, you can actually get for someone who wants the you know kind of the protection of the. If I go into order, there are better photos. Yeah, um, for someone who wants, uh, you know, the same kind of protection for the screen that the um, Apple Watch Ultra has, uh, you can actually get a stainless steel Apple Watch Series 8, and I think that might actually be a little less expensive than this, uh, and it comes with the sapphire screen, but it doesn't come with the extra stuff. Uh, the only thing I don't really like is this this design here. Uh, it's a little weird, and I think it was made to just make it um, look more rugged. I think maybe dirt can get into here uh, if it's not super tightly sealed, and also maybe um, uh, I think the crown might be harder to use. The cool thing about the crown on the normal watch is that you know it's just ex you can't see it. It's just exposed, and you can just move it around, right? But since there's only like two main contact points here and here, I think that might be a little harder to move. Um, you know, <laughs> that's basically on the watch. It has 36 hours of battery life, which is crazy, and it has like. 60 uh, hours of battery life with the extra low power mode. The low power mode is coming later. Um, so that's kind of crazy. Another thing uh, that it comes with is the 
car crash detection, you know, as the Series 8, and the um, same body temperature detection as the Series 8. Uh, but it comes with um, satellite communication, which the normal Series 8 doesn't come with. Uh, and satellite communication is basically when you're not connected to Wi-Fi or not connected to cellular, you can um, still contact satellites, and those satellites can call like 911 uh, and give you your GPS location. Uh, this also comes with way better GPS. Um, you know, so apparently if you're like doing a, they did this really weird example where they're like, oh, if you're doing a marathon in a city, the <laughs> like the the buildings won't be blocking the GPS satellites. Um, so we have this new like GPS five technology. It was super odd. I don't know why they explained it like that. It must not be that important because they only touched on it for a second. But uh, yeah, that's the watch. Um, next thing they talked about was the AirPods. They introduced the uh, the new AirPods Pro, um, and you know, I don't know. They're they're cool, I guess. Uh, they look, in my opinion, a little worse. Uh, the, the actual things themselves, um, the the buds themselves. But they have a better battery life and. Um, yeah, they have up to six hours as opposed to four hours on the regular uh, pros. And um, what else? It comes with a little um, thing on the case so you can attach a lanyard to it. Uh, it comes with a speaker on the case and it also comes with um, Find My support so you can um, locate it the same way you locate air tags, which is nice. Um, the noise cancellation is twice as good. Uh, and it also has this like special transparency mode where um, you know you can hear everything just fine except for like really loud sounds. Uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure how that how well that'll work, but you know, I guess I guess we'll see in reviews. And uh, the last thing they talked about was the new iPhone, uh, and this is actually a little interesting um, because everybody was expecting a $100 price hike to all of the um, to all of the iPhones, uh, but that actually didn't end up happening, and it's staying at $799, which is crazy because that's definitely going to cut into their profit margins. Uh, and another funny thing about the 14 is that there's nothing new about it, um, honestly. If someone had to get a new iPhone and they're like, should I get the 14 or the 13? I would recommend the 13 because it's way less money. And the only thing you're really paying for is um, satellite communication for two years. Then you have to pay a subscription. Um, you're also paying for car crash detection. And uh, I, I don't know. That's it. It'll, it'll probably uh, be updated longer, maybe a year longer. But um, I honestly can't imagine any reason why you would get the 14 as opposed to the 13. Um, you know... <laughs> The, the 14 uh, actually comes with a plus model, uh, as opposed to... The, the 14 actually comes with a plus model, as opposed to a 13, which came with a 13 and the 13 mini, right? And so I, I think that might be the only reason you'd get the 14. Uh, but it's a little odd, because the 14 Pro uh, line is called the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max for the larger version, but just the 14 line is called the 14 and the 14 Plus, uh, which is a little strange. I don't know why they have two different naming conventions for something being smaller and larger. Um, you would expect it for branding to be a little better, but I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're really trying to separate um, the the pro models and the non pro models. Speaking of separation between the pro models and the non pro models, uh, this is like the biggest separation between two iPhone models ever. Um, this has actually got um, the old chip is last year, which has never happened. Uh, they aren't really getting a chip upgrade. I think it might be a little more efficient or something, but it's still called the A15 Bionic chip, uh, while the 14 Pro gets the A16, right? And um, you know, that's not too bad. The A15 Bionic is still a really good chip. Uh, but this doesn't really come with much. Uh, I think it might come with this thing called Action Mode? I'm actually not sure. Let's see. Action Mode. Do you come with Action Mode? Yeah, okay. It comes with Action Mode, uh, which is basically just a stabilizer. So if you're... My phone's charging. If you're holding your phone and you're holding it like this, you know, it'll be stabilized. Um, okay. Uh... Yeah, nothing's really going on to the 14. Uh, the really interesting stuff was with the 14 Pro. So um, they mentioned that on the 14, Pro, they didn't mention anything uh, about the cellular, about the satellite stuff only being available for two years. So I think the Pro might have the, the satellite connection permanently. Uh, but the interesting thing about the Pro is that uh, is this uh, new new kind of hole punch camera system. And uh, let me actually bring something up. Um, People actually thought for a really long time, up until um, very recently, that the notch was actually going to look um, a little different. Yeah, okay, this is a good example. Uh, people thought that the notch was going to look like this, uh, because that's what all of the internal Apple schematics and everything showed, but it seems like they changed it to this last minute, and um, they actually changed it to what they're calling, I think, a dynamic island. Um, 
Let's see. Oh well, I can't find that. I'm pretty sure they're calling it a dynamic island as opposed to a notch, which is very funny. Uh, but the nice thing about that is that it actually ends up meaning that you can just, um, a lot of stuff ends up um, kind of wrapping around the notch in a very nice kind of pseudo software integrated way. Um, and once this loads, I don't know why it's taking so long, uh, you'll see what I mean. So it kind of expands and contracts depending on what you're using and how it integrates with stuff. And you can actually see here, if you're using two things at once, it'll, um, it'll kind of show that you're using two things at once. So not only are you uh, recording, like, I think this is a voice memo, you're also um, checking your lift or something. Uh, the only thing that sucks is that it actually makes it so then you can't really see certain things when um, it's all the way out. So like, for example, when you're recording, uh, again, what I think is a voice memo, you can't see whether you're connected to Wi-Fi or if you're connected to cellular, uh, which kind of sucks. Um, especially, you know, if you're doing something like a, like a lift thing or something, I think it would be pretty important, you know, if you're driving. Uh, or if you're in a moving car to see if you're connected to Wi-Fi or not, if you're connected to some sort of hotspot. Um, but you know, that, that's just my opinion. And uh, you know, I wonder, I wonder if you can turn this functionality off. I wouldn't if I had the phone, but um, you know, I, I just think that's pretty interesting. Uh, another cool thing is um, on iOS 16, you're actually gonna be able to see the, the battery percentage in the icon here. Um, so they're, they're going to be updating it. So then as opposed to just seeing the icon and then you have to swipe down to go into control panels to see, to see the, um, the battery percentage, you can actually just see the battery percentage directly on the icon, which will be nice. Uh, so it means you can always see your battery percentage no matter what, even if you're using you know, the, the, the dynamic island up here. Um, uh, another cool thing is the, uh, the, uh, the flagship color. There's like a specific halo, uh, I think it's called a halo color. The halo color for this is purple. Uh, which I think is a little interesting. I believe the uh, halo color for the 13 was Sierra blue, and the halo color for the <laughs> for the 12 was like this darker blue, and then the halo color for the 11 was like this midnight green. Um, and you know, I'm into it. I think it looks pretty nice. And my favorite is still the uh, the halo color green that came with the iPhone 11. If I just look up iPhone 11, um, it'll one sec. If I just look up iPhone 11 Pro, you'll see. One second. Okay, yeah. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best Halo color out of all of them. But, you know, what can you do, I guess? Um, yeah, I mean, it looks okay. It comes with an always-on display because it has an LTPO 2.0 uh, screen. And that means it can go all the way down to 1 hertz, like the, um, the Apple Watch. And so it's able to um, it's able to have an always-on screen, which is surprising because this is actually one of the best always-on screens ever. Um, a lot of always-on screens just show um, maybe a couple dots for notifications and the time, but this shows you know literally the entire uh, just a darker version of like the wallpaper and stuff, uh, which is super interesting. And it makes me wonder how it's going to affect battery life because in the presentation, if you've seen it, uh, they actually don't mention battery life at all on the um, on the 14 and 14 Pro. Uh, which is weird because if they have battery life improvements, they normally tout it for a big long time, right? And they just said, we have the same all day battery life, which, you know, there was all day battery life on the 13. So, and it could be worse, you know, than the 13 and still have all day ba battery life. Um, and so maybe it will be, so maybe the 14 will have slightly worse battery life than the 13, uh, but we'll see. Uh, and you know, that's not unheard of. Uh, the iPhone 12 added the, um, added 5G and that actually meant the iPhone 12 had slightly worse battery than the iPhone 11. Um, but you know, 14 battery is still really great. And, uh, someone's probably not upgrading to the 14 from the 13. And so, um, the, the difference between someone's original phone and, uh, the 14 or the 14 pro is, is probably going to be exponential enough to where it, it's larger than it was already. Like nobody's going to have a downgrade in battery life if they're upgrading, uh, unless they upgrade from the 13, which is unlikely. Um, they talked more about widgets, uh, but they already talked about widgets in the iOS 16 presentation. Um, yeah, it comes with, uh, it comes with crash detection, like on the 14, um, oh, it comes with a 48 megapixel camera, which is actually a little crazy, uh, because this, this is the first, uh, megapixel upgrade since the iPhone 6S, um, and that originally brought it up to a 12 megapixel camera, so it could do a uh, 4K video recording, right? And, um, the interesting thing about this 48 megapixel camera is that it actually only, um, it actually only takes photos in 48 megapixels if you're in, um... I think Pro Raw is the name, um, and it's like I'm pretty sure it's some like Apple, Apple thing, uh, 
it might, it might be it might be a raw standard, but I'm pretty sure other photo count companies use other things. Uh, but they use this thing called Pro Raw, and it basically makes it so then it saves all of the photo settings with the photo, so you can edit them later. Uh, and that is the only case where 48 megapixel is being um, actively used, like pixel for pixel, the entire thing is 48 megapixels, right? Uh, in other cases, when you're not using Pro Raw, which is large majority of the time, uh, it's going to be binning down to 12 megapixels. Uh, but that's fine. That's not a downgrade because. Um, while you do have less resolution, there's actually more information being picked up by the camera because it's 48 megapixels. So when it's going from 48 megapixels down to a 12 megapixel image, uh, that actually means just way more detail, um, you know, way better low light performance, uh, ju just a lot of really interesting stuff that doesn't necessarily, like a lot of good upgrades that don't necessarily come from exclusively resolution from the 48 megapixel, megapixel sensor, right? Um, another thing that's happening is, um, they have this new image image signal processor or something in the phone that makes, um, according to Apple, their cameras twice as good in everything. Uh, but I don't know if that's just kind of a cop out. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe their software it just really is that much better. I mean, it's not unheard of, but um, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. So these these are just examples of how good these photos look. Of course, Apple iPhone photos look very different from real iPhone photos, but um. Yeah, yeah, this is the two and three times numbers I was talking about earlier. Um, oh, cinematic mode is in 4K as opposed to 1080p. Um, there's action mode. Oh, uh, in in the in the camera app, I'm not sure if they show this, but you can actually have two times uh, zoom now. Uh, there used to be a setting at the bottom where you can choose between the 0.5 ultra wide sensor, um, the one times main sensor, or the two or the three times macro sensor but since the main camera is actually 48 megapixels now that means that um you can zoom in as if it were two times digitally and uh it would still be within 12 megapixels right so now you have four now you have four zoom options you have 0.5 uh one times two times and three times which is nice uh because you know more options is always good and uh you know sometimes three times is just a little too much but you don't want to go for one times because of the um the focal length i'm not sure if that's a correct term but you know um but yeah, I think all of this is pretty interesting. Um, you know, I don't know. It's all right. You know, it's definitely a better upgrade than the 13. A lot of people say <laughs> it's definitely a better upgrade than the 13, and it's way better of an upgrade from the than the um, 11 to the 12. Because the only thing that really changed between the 11 and the 12 is they added ceramic shield, and uh, you know the the, <laughs> the edges became uh, they added ceramic shields. The cameras became better, and the edges became flat. Right, and of course, you know that's basically a standard iPhone upgrade. Uh, but with something like this, um, especially with the with the dynamic island, uh, it's it's basically a direct change to Apple's design language lately. Uh, they've really been embracing the notch, uh, putting it into the into the uh, MacBooks, um, and so it makes me wonder, you know, maybe in the future there'll be like a MacBook with something like a like a dynamic island, you know. Uh, but who knows, right? Um, but the whole thing is just super interesting, and um, you know. We'll see. We'll see how it is. Um, and I definitely, in my opinion, it's a better upgrade than uh, it's a better upgrade than the last few upgrades uh, because it comes with an all new notch and it's just cool. I think. Oh, and there's no SIM tray. Um, I think that um, this is this is probably a, like a net good thing because it means that um, there's no SIM tray in the U.S. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and I think this is maybe a good thing because it means that. Uh, carriers will have to use eSIM now, which is great. eSIM's awesome. Uh, but also, I don't know, it's just less functionality, um, which of course is why they're not doing it outside the US, but, um, oh, my bad. Uh, which is, which of course is why they're not doing it outside of the US. Um, but, you know, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. I think that might be all. Whoa, that, that's a, that's a lot of text. Um, so, new iPhone 14, new AirPods, new um, new Apple Watch, and that's crazy. Um, yeah, this is my this is the longest video in a really long time, and you can probably get way better coverage of the Apple event uh, than me. But you know, I am just really into this. I think it's cool, and uh, you know, I'm not some big Apple fan. I um I would I would never own a Mac computer, uh, but you know, I think some of the stuff they're doing is cool, and uh, you know, I, I I like some of the products they make. Um, yeah. Oh, for breakfast, I had a, we went to this place and I had a cheese Dana, which was really good. 
for lunch, I just had a banana. And uh, for dinner, I'm probably going to have a, the mess sandwich at, um, at work, because uh, I'm working at four. Um, has anything else happened today? No, nothing's wrong. Oh, and we're at 20 minutes. All right, see you, dude.